Hello, I'm Ralph Gable of the Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter YouTube channel. In the last video in this series, I went through the design and analysis of the beta stabilized version of the common emitter circuit of the bipolar junction transistor. Now, if you've missed that video, there's a link up in the corner to it for you. Now, I didn't have time in that video to bring the whole thing to the bench. So in this video, I'm going to select the parts from my collection of parts. I'm going to reverse engineer the resulting circuit using the values that I found. And then I'm going to go to the bench to see how it performs. Now, included in this is a comparison between this new and improved version and the basic common emitter circuit, which I designed around the same operating conditions. Now, when I reverse engineer the circuit, I will be utilizing Kirchhoff's voltage law. If you're not familiar with this, I do have a video on that subject that you can take in to get a handle on it. There's a link to that video up in the corner for you. The second tool that I'm going to be utilizing is Thevenin equivalent circuits. Now, like I've said before, this is a really weird one and it is not intuitively obvious. Now, I have a video on that subject as well. If you're not familiar with it, there's a link up in the corner for you. Now, I've provided a go along with the video sheet, which contains the same step-by-step -step process for you, along with some additional equations for things like input impedance, output impedance. There's one mathematical sleight of hand that I will provide the derivation for in this sheet. You'll find a link for this downloadable sheet in the description. So if you have questions or comments, please feel free to add a comment to this video. If you find this video helpful, please click on the like and don't forget to subscribe. I will begin by choosing my parts from the junk bin. To begin this task, I had to randomly choose a 2N3904 transistor from my collection. But in reality, I'm using the same transistors in this demonstration that I have used in the four previous videos. This way, we can compare results. The next task is finding resistors to match our calculated values. None of my resistors came close to the calculated values, so I had to use two resistors to create a single value in all but one case. And this is what I came up with. For the 1.194 K ohm emitter resistor RE, I have a 1.21 K ohm resistor, which actually measures 1.2065 K ohms. For the 5.4 K ohm collector resistor RC, I had to use two resistors, a 5.1 K ohm and a 300 ohm resistor. The combined series resistance measured 5.41 K ohms. For the 142.57 K ohm R1 resistor, I also had to use two resistors, a 130 K ohm and a 12.2 K ohm resistor. The combined series resistance measured 142.75 K ohms. And finally, for the 28.858 K ohm R2 resistor, I also had to use two resistors, a 27.4 K ohm and a 1.47 K ohm resistor. The series combination of these measured at 28.772 K ohms. These are not the same as the actual calculated values so I'm going to have to reverse engineer the circuit so I can see what to expect when I get it on the bench. I'm going to begin this process by calculating the Thevenin equivalent voltage and resistance using the same equations we used before. V Thevenin is equal to Vcc times R2 divided by R1 plus R2 and R Thevenin is equal to R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. So what do we know? We know VCC is 12 volts. R1 is 142.75 K ohms. 
and R2 is 28.772 K ohms. So the Thevenin voltage is equal to 12 volts times 28.772 K ohms divided by 142.75 K ohms plus 28.772 K ohms, which gives us a Thevenin voltage of 2.013 volts. And then the Thevenin equivalent resistance is equal to 142.75 K ohms times 28.772 K ohms divided by 142.75 K ohms plus 28.772 K ohms, which gives us the value of the Thevenin resistance of 23.95 K ohms. Now, with these values in hand, we can figure out what the base current is supposed to be. Well, finding the base current begins with going back to the KVL equation around the V Thevenin base emitter loop that we used in the last video. So what do we know here? Well, the only thing that we know is the Thevenin voltage and the base emitter voltage. We have to unravel the voltage across the Thevenin resistance, VR Thevenin, and the voltage across the emitter resistor, VRE. So we're going to begin with the voltage across the Thevenin resistance by using Ohm's law. This tells us that the voltage across R Thevenin is equal to current through it times the value of it. So what do we know? Well, we know the value of R Thevenin, and we know that the current through R Thevenin is the same as the base current IB. So this becomes the voltage across R Thevenin is equal to the base current times R Thevenin. Okay, so I'm going to set this on the shelf for the moment and turn my attention to the voltage across the emitter resistor, VRE. Ohm's law tells us that the voltage across the emitter resistor is equal to the current through it times the value of it. And we know the emitter current can be found by multiplying the base current times the quantity of the DC current gain, beta, plus 1. Putting this into our Ohm's law equation, we have that the voltage across the emitter resistor is equal to the base current, IB, times the quantity of 1 plus the DC gain, beta, times the value of the emitter resistor, RE. Now we can return to the KVL equation, putting in these two new discoveries. We get V Thevenin minus the quantity the base current times R Thevenin minus the voltage across the base emitter junction, VBE, minus the quantity, the base current, times 1 plus beta times the emitter resistor value is all equal to zero. So what do we know? Well, we know that Thevenin voltage, V Thevenin, is 2.013 volts. We know the Thevenin resistance R Thevenin is 23.95 K ohms. We know the voltage across the base emitter junction VBE is 0.7 volts, according to our model. The DC current gain is beta is 200, and the emitter resistor value RE is 1.2065 K ohms. Putting all these known values into our modified KVL equation, we get 2.013 minus IB times 23.95 K ohms minus 0.7 volts minus IB times 1 plus 200 times 1.2065 K ohms is all equal to zero. Notice that the only unknown in this whole equation is the base current IB. And after doing a little algebraic rearranging, we get the base current IB is equal to 2.013 volts minus 0.7 volts, all divided by 23.95 K ohms plus the quantity 
1 plus 200 times the 1.2065 k ohms. Solving for the base current, we get 4.928 microamps. Now that we've determined the base current, we can turn our attention to the emitter collector circuit. Well, our goal in the end is to determine the expected voltage on the collector with our modified values. To accomplish this, the first thing I'm going to do is bring back to mind the KVL equation that we wrote in the last video for the loop around the collector emitter circuit. Now, we don't know a whole bunch, but we can start to put things together one piece at a time beginning at the emitter. Ohm's law tells us that the voltage across the emitter resistor is equal to the current through it times the value of it. And while we know the value of the emitter resistor because, well, we measured it, we have to discover the current through it. And as I said a little bit ago, the emitter current can be found by multiplying the base current by the quantity, the DC current gain beta plus one. So what do we know? We know the base current, IB, is 4.928 microamps from our last calculation. And we know the DC current gain beta is 200. So the emitter current is equal to 4.928 microamps times 1 plus 200, which gives us an emitter current of 0.99 milliamps. Now we return to our Ohm's law equation. So what do we know? We know that the emitter current, IE, is 0.99 milliamps by our last calculation. We know that the current through the emitter resistor is the same as the emitter current. And we know that the value of the emitter resistor, RE, is 1.2065 k ohms. Well, like I said before, because we measured it. So we have the voltage across the emitter resistor is equal to 0.99 milliamps times 1.2065 k ohms, which gives us an emitter voltage of 1.194 volts. Now we can turn our attention to the collector. We need to discover the voltage across the collector resistor RC. For this, we go to Ohm's law, which tells us that the voltage across the collector resistor is equal to the current through it times the value of it. We need to figure out what the current through the resistor is. We know that the collector current is equal to the base current times the DC current gain beta. And we know the base current is 4.928 microamps from a previous calculation. And we know the DC current gain beta is 200. Putting all these numbers into our equation gives us that the collector current is equal to 4.928 microamps times 200. So the collector current is equal to 0.9856 milliamps. Now with this new knowledge, we can return to our Ohm's law equation. So what do we know? We know that the current through the collector resistor is 0.9856 milliamps from our last calculation. And we know that the value of it is 5.41 k ohms because, well, we measured it. This gives us a voltage across the collector resistor of 0.9856 milliamps times 5.41 k ohms which yields a value of 5.332 volts. So we're almost there. We still have to determine what the collector voltage is going to be. Well, the first step in determining the collector voltage is calculating the voltage across the collector emitter of the transistor. To do this, we go back to our KVL equation for the collector emitter loop. So what do we know? Well, we know the power supply voltage, VCC, is 12 volts. We know the voltage across the collector resistor, VRC, is 5.332 volts. And we know that the voltage across the emitter resistor, VRE, is 1.194 volts. Putting all this into our KVL equation, we get 12 volts 
minus 5.332 volts, minus VCE, minus 1.194 volts is equal to zero. Now we're interested in the voltage across the collector emitter VCE, so I add VCE to both sides to get VCE is equal to 12 volts minus 5.332 volts minus 1.194 volts. Doing the quick and simple math tells me that the voltage across the collector emitter of our transistor is equal to 5.474 volts. Now we just have to figure out what the voltage in the collector will be given all of this. So we start at ground moving up through the emitter resistor to the emitter. We have gained 1.194 volts in this trip. We continue from the emitter to the collector gaining an additional 5.474 volts of VCE. The expected voltage will be the voltage across the emitter resistor VRE plus the voltage across the collector emitter VCE which gives us 1.194 volts plus 5.474 volts. Doing this simple math, we get a collector voltage of 6.668 volts. Now we can go to the bench. Well, here's my little setup. You can see the multiple resistors taking the place of the single resistor calculated values. And you can see here the collector voltage. I calculated that the collector voltage should be 6.68 volts. And we got 6.87 volts here on the bench. But the whole purpose of this design was to make its DC operating point more stable with changes in the DC current gain of the transistor. So let's see how much variation we get by swapping in randomly chosen transistors from my collection of 2N3904 transistors. The first gives me a collector voltage of 7.15 volts. The second gives me 6.73 volts. I measured 6.61 volts with the third. Finally, I see 7.03 volts with the fourth and last transistor. This gives me a difference of 0.54 volts between the maximum and minimum values. So how does this compare to the basic common emitter circuit? I wanted to compare apples to apples, so I set up a basic common emitter circuit using the same transistors that I used here with the same operating conditions of a collector current of 1 milliamp and a collector emitter voltage of 5.4 volts. Then I did the same transistor swap, noting the collector voltage as I went. The variation in collector voltage from maximum to minimum across the same transistors was 5.56 volts. This is a factor of 10 greater than the beta stabilized version. You can see the vast improvement. So there you have the beta stabilized version of the common emitter bipolar junction transistor circuit. In the last video, you saw how to design one. In this one, you got to see how to reverse engineer one. We have also seen the tremendous improvement to its sensitivity to changes in the DC current gain of the transistor. If you found this video helpful, please click on the like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, toodaloots.